Wanna play a co-op game but by yourself? Wait, what? Resident Evil Zero was released in 2002 for the Nintendo GameCube and was re-released for, like, every console after that in a remastered version developed by Capcom. Like the title suggests, Resident Evil Zero is a prequel to the first game. Rebecca Chambers, the medic girl from Chris's Route, returns as a main character, teaming up with Billy Cohen, a prisoner who somehow escapes from his escort car and meets Rebecca in a train full of zombies. Teaming up. That's weird. Those are not words that should be connected to a Resident Evil game. It's all about being alone and scared and helpless. There must be a mistake. Don't worry, there are worse things to be worried about right now. But let's look at the graphics first. This game looks great. Just like the Resident Evil remake, it's really atmospheric. The gross looking enemies, the train ride gone wrong, creepy places that were once filled with life now abandoned, Capcom nailed it. Accompanying these visuals is the chilling soundtrack. Man, exploring the scary, spooky locations with this shit on keeps my asshole tucked and balls shriveled. Like all the other classic RE games, RE0 uses fixed camera angles. The original GameCube version uses pre-rendered backgrounds to look good while maintaining good performance. While the remaster added some 3D backgrounds, it's not fully 3D, so those cameras are still here to stay. Anyway, it works, shows you only what the devs want you to see. It'll fuck you over sometimes with hidden enemies though, but hey, it's for the scares. The remastered visuals look nice, but sometimes there's some minor details in the background that doesn't run at the same frame rate as the rest of the game. They can be distracting, but it's nothing that ruins the experience. On PC, the mouse cursor can't be hidden when in gameplay, so if you use mouse and keyboard controls, get used to seeing the mouse everywhere. It's the same with the remake, but again, it's nothing that you can't get used to. But is it really that hard to hide the cursor in gameplay and have it reappear in the menus? It's one of those shitty PC port things that's still happening after all these years. Other than those minor issues, the visuals are great. If you played a classic style RE game before, then this should feel familiar. The game uses tank controls, up to go forward, down to go backwards, left and right to rotate. Alternatively, you can use the modern controls where the characters go where you point them, but then you have to readjust every time the camera angle changes. They both can take some time to get used to, so try them both out and see which one you like more and just stick to it. The one feature that stands out is the fact that you can use two characters, Rebecca and Billy, which can create some interesting gameplay scenarios for puzzles among other things. I mean, there are puzzles where you have to use both characters to accomplish. For example, one has to stand on a platform while the other turns the crank to lower them down, or one activates a switch to unlock an item while the other has to be close to it to grab it fast enough before it locks up. They're pretty basic actually. I rarely have to think about what I need to do for those. Gameplay wise, Billy is stronger, has more health, and an expert piano player, while Rebecca can mix herbs and create certain chemicals to progress the game. Which makes sense because Billy is a war veteran and Rebecca is a medic. One extra character comes extra inventory management and it's one of the worst things in this game. You'll be exchanging items a lot during gameplay and it's kinda annoying. You have to go into the inventory, select the item, press exchange, pick an empty slot in the other character's inventory or another item you want, and confirm. You can also select the quantity of items like bullets to exchange if you want. You'll be exchanging shit a lot, and this way of trading is a bit slow, especially with mouse and keyboard controls. It's not something you can't get used to, but a drag and drop system would have been awesome. I guess I'm just a weirdo who plays PC games with mouse and keyboard instead of controllers. Optimize the controls for PC, damn it! Fucking real Yakuza use game pads. For some fucking reason, Capcom decided item boxes are too convenient, so they took them out and have the players leave their items on the floor to make space instead. Why? I don't get it. Is it to make an already hard game even harder? What happens when you want an item, but it's like a mile away from your location? Well, you have to backtrack, and that's gonna cost you some time. It's so unnecessary. There's certain enemies that will fuck your shit up no matter what unless you have a powerful weapon. The monkeys are terrible to fight. If you get stuck with two or three of them, and you're out of ammo for shotgun or grenade launcher, you're as good as fuck. They'll stun lock you so hard and you have no choice but to take it like a little bitch. The leechmen are the worst. 
They use their long arms to whip you and take forever to kill unless you use Molotov cocktails or grenade launcher rounds. Once they start attacking, you won't have enough time to use your shit against it. It's so unfair and not fun at all. And the frogs? <laughs> Fuck the frogs. Bosses are mostly easy. Just remember to save ammo for the stronger weapons and you'll be fine. It's mostly just giant animals, so it's not the most creative design-wise. Since this is a survival horror game, ammo and healing items are limited to enhance the horror and feeling of helplessness. But in this game, they need to have more items available. After a certain point, I found myself out of ammo for all of my strong weapons and no healing items. It isn't until a long while later that I finally found some herbs to heal myself with. Man, that hour or so of just dodging enemies and dying over and over again, that was fucked. And I tried my best to be conservative with everything. The monkeys were everywhere. Why are there so many monkeys? Every time I put the game back up, I dread of what I'll encounter next. Not because this game is too scary, because it's just frustrating to play. The only thing I look forward to is the intro video. Man, this shit's a banger. It sounds spooky and hype at the same time. Definitely one for the dance clubs. The story is pretty simple. The game takes place a short while before the events of the first one. There's a train that gets attacked by this Final Fantasy looking motherfucker with his surprisingly good singing skills and leeches that follow his every command. The Star's Bravo team is on their way to investigate the gruesome murders that took place in Raccoon City until their helicopter got fucked and forced to land. There they discovered some dead guards near a prisoner transportation car and assumed they were killed by the prisoner inside. Moments later, Rebecca discovers the crashed train and goes in to investigate. Inside, Rebecca finds out everyone turned into zombies. After popping some heads, Rebecca runs into Billy Cohen, prisoner those dead guards were transporting. Later on, Billy wants to turn on co-op mode so they would have a better chance of surviving. Rebecca disagrees and went on by herself. After awakening a leech man, Rebecca pussies out and Billy comes to help. Realizing it is best to stick together, Rebecca teams up with Billy and they have a good old co-op time. Except not really. Later on, they end up in an umbrella training facility which looks a lot like the mansion from the first game, and basically the rest is just them going to places, fighting zombies and giant insects and animals, while even bigger ones pop up occasionally. In between them surviving, Wesker and Birkin, the villain from the second game, show up in cutscenes watching Rebecca and Billy while being evil and shit, and also that Final Fantasy man doing shit with leeches. It's kind of funny to be honest. Resident Evil Zero is not good. The graphics, music, and atmosphere are still top notch, but with minor issues. The story is fine, but the gameplay really ruins my spooky scary boner. Exchanging items between characters could have been faster, and the lack of item boxes made backtracking a must, wasting a lot of time, and organization out the window. The co-op puzzles are too simple, and makes me wonder why the game even has two controllable characters in the first place. Some enemies will pummel your anus until it's shut forever. And again, why are there so many monkeys? This game is just not pleasant to play. I'd rather play RE6. <laughs> uh, no I wouldn't. Well, that sucked a lot of cock, but at least the nightmare is over. Thanks for watching, and thanks for 100 subscribers. Nice to know there's people who have no taste in good content like me. Just kidding. Or am I? Happy Halloween everyone. Don't eat too much candy. See you whenever. Bye. <laughs>